illegal pyramids versus legal distribution. Illegal pyramids versus legal distribution. I want to spend some time on this because there's a lot of misconceptions. There's even business authors out there that think that uh, all network marketing companies are somehow illegal pyramids or they don't know the difference and can't tell the difference. There's some anti-MLM zealots that write and think that they're experts and they don't know the difference. I want to help clarify for you and your mind in a very simple way with some graphics what's the difference. First of all, I want to show you two pyramids and this will help you clear up this issue. Here's pyramid number one, all right? And uh, it's got a pyramid originator. It's got some levels in here to it and more and more levels to it. Here's another pyramid. This is a, a, a picture of a typical manufacturing legal distribution method of products. A manufacturer manufactures the products. They uh, sell them out to wholesalers. They pass them on to regional distributors or jobbers. There are retailers out there that put it on. And then, of course, there are customers who buy that product. Now, notice there's nothing wrong with the pyramid shape in and of itself. Uh, most governments are structured in a pyramidal shape. It's a very strong shape in, in architecture. Nothing wrong with pyramids. They're remarkable entities, right? But there are illegal pyramids, and you certainly don't want to participate in one of those. And you ought to know the difference if you're going to be in network marketing, because many people do not. So let me show you a big difference. In both these cases, you have dollars that flow from the, from the lower levels up to the higher levels. It happens in legal distribution methods, right? It happens in illegal pyramids. Money flows. That's not a problem. What is a problem, though, and a distinguishing factor, is that value in a legal distribution function, value always flows back to the customers. So while you have dollars going up, you have value flowing back, and you have lots of customers who, with a free will, are saying, I happily give my money because I'm getting value. That's the case. Not so in an illegal pyramid. There's no value flowing back to these people up over here. Instead, what you might have down here are dupes. And rightly so, the law tries to eliminate people from being dupes and protects people. But often that's an imperfect system, okay? So uh, that's the difference between illegal pyramid and legal distribution. I used to think, well, heck, if there's products, it must be legal. If there's no products, it's not. Well, you're going to see it's not that cut and dried. There's some real gray areas here. But in the case of a legal distribution or a legal network marketing company, there must be customers. So the first thing you can do if you're looking at a business venture that someone says is a multi-level marketing venture or they deny it, in either case, the question is, are there some customers? Are there real customers who buy the products or service and even reorder even though they're not part of the comp plan? In other words, it's not an additional motivation. They just think that it's a good value. Good question to ask. What percentage of the sales are to customers. Now, what percent should there be? You know, there isn't a legal definition of that. You know, in many states it's, it's different, but there ought to be a significant uh, percentage of customers who are buying the products, even though their main motivation has nothing to do with the compensation plan. If there's not a significant number of customers that are buying the product, the company runs the risk of litigation or being closed down or perhaps even the principals or the top leaders going to jail. All right, so a typical legal MLM distribution model looks something like this. You do have a manufacturer, you've got an MLM company. Freak, sometimes it's the same. The company manufactures their products, but more often than not, that's not the case. The uh, MLM company simply works as a sales arm they have their products manufactured and labeled, private labeled for them, and that's okay. You've got your upper level distributors, you've got your middle level distributors, you have your newest distributors, then underneath it all, you have customers, and of course, that's the critical thing. You have to have dollars flowing up, you know, I mean, obviously, if there's no dollars flowing up, you're in trouble, and to be legal, you have to have value flowing back through
through the ranks to the customers ultimately. Now, here's another question that uh, comes up. It's a, it's a myth I want to dispel. Does it matter how many levels there are between the manufacturer and the customers? Does that matter at all? Well, the answer, candidly, is no, right? It doesn't matter at all. All that matters is that there's value flowing and that the customers are happy. I mean, if you had 100 levels and you were paying 100 people between the manufacturer and the customers, but the customers still felt they were getting great value, what difference could it possibly make? It doesn't make any difference at all. Now, is it possible if you have 100 people getting paid before uh, you know the customers can receive their value? Well, it might. The more, the more levels there are, the more difficult it is. But the question is not how many levels and how many people are here. The question is, is there real value going to customers and do they see it as such and can you establish that that's a reality? If so, no harm, right? It can be completely legal. Now, one other myth while we're at it. Sometimes people say, well, okay, part of the problem is the people that get in early make all the money and the people that come late don't make any in a properly designed network marketing compensation plan, it doesn't matter whether you come in early or you come in later. If the compensation plan allows for it, you should be able to make you know a lot more money even though there's hundreds of people above you in the compensation plan. Let me just show you how this works, all right? Let's say this is you up here. You're the very first uh, person in a network marketing company and you sponsor, this is you, and you sponsor three people. 